what we're looking at here, we are looking at a storm surge of 7 to 12 feet coming ashore at Kedi Bandor. Uh, that is on the Arabian Sea coast of Sendai, Pakistan. Thanks to a tweet by uh, packweather.com. This was, of course, Cyclone Bipperjoy coming ashore uh, in far northwestern India and southeastern Pakistan in the last few days. That system is now a depression and moving across the northwestern portion of India, bringing heavy rainfall. Thanks for clicking on to the 46th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. A big edition today, an exciting one. Lots of things to cover, as always, in the past week's weather and extremes around the planet. Hope everybody is enjoying their weekend so far. Uh, we do have a lot of things to cover, of course, looking at the Indian monsoon and what's happening with that. We're also going to be seeing what the status of the Indian Ocean Dipole is. The El Nino, of course, developing, being declared by uh, NOAA, uh, still yet to be declared by the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. And uh, what what ramifications is this going to have on the global pattern? Of course, here in the UK, we've got um, you know rumours of drought. We've got uh, very warm temperatures compared to average, and over a very long period of time as well. Um, you know, some will argue that it hasn't been as, as extreme as what some of the media sources are saying. Certainly 25 to 27 Celsius over the span of a week. Reasonably warm for our part of the world. So this is the, the GFS uh, or the Ensemble two, 200 millibar velocity potential anomaly here of weather, uh, tropical tidbits, sorry. And you can see here a large area of sinking over the Atlantic, uh, quite a large area of upward motion lift within the western portion of the Pacific Ocean. What that's doing is, is of course, Bipperjoy has came through. There has been a bit of a delay in the onset of the Indian monsoon. Of course, as the land heats up over the Indian subcontinent, of course, the uh, the relatively cool waters are relatively cooler over the Indian Ocean versus the 45 to 47 Celsius over the heart of India, what that does is it triggers the southwesterly winds uh, from uh, Indian Ocean towards the land where pressure lowers as the air heats up over land. And of course, you've got higher than average pressure over the Indian Ocean. So that triggers southwesterly winds. And indeed, that is essentially a very simplistic uh, explanation of what the Indian monsoon actually is. It's not really a storm or a, a rain event as such it's it's simply a wind shift at the you know at this time of the year that then migrates northwards it kind of pulsates um northwards over the subcontinent as we progress really from about the beginning of june through the, the, the through the month of july and what happens is we've got this build-up of heat that takes place at this time of the year we've got record breaking temperatures in the eastern portions of india a little bit less hot in the west, thanks to the presence of Cyclone Bipperjoy, which is keeping the temperatures in New Delhi at a, a, a relatively, and I have to say the word relatively, comfortable upper 30s. We are, are likely to stay below the 40 Celsius mark in Delhi uh, in the coming days, thanks to it more in the way of cloud cover. And indeed, a little bit of rain here and there for the, the northern portions of India. It looks as if we are going to start to see an increase in rainfall uh, and uh, a little bit more northward progression of the uh, the monsoon over the next week or so. But there has been a bit of a delay and typically El Nino's tend to um, lead to uh, drier conditions, uh, a weaker monsoon, drier conditions across southeastern portions of, uh, of Asia and uh, and Indonesia as well. But we do have quite a strong pulse, uh, uh, as you can see here, over the western portion of the Pacific. Uh, of course, um, you know, a large scale sinking over the, the Atlantic, as you can see here. But as we play through the loop here over the next week or so, you see how we start to see the, the greens start to uh, push eastwards. So it starts to progress eastwards across the Pacific Ocean. And eventually, once we start to reach you know, the uh, the period Tuesday of next week, the 20th of June, it looks as if uh, we start to see a little bit more 
of uh, an upward motion developing over the the Atlantic here. So we are seeing a shift with the eastward progression of the Man Julian oscillation, and that is having an impact on not just the monsoon, not just the rain distribution over Southeast Asia and China, but across other parts of the world as well. It actually uh, starts to change the upper Earth pattern across the entire planet. And if you see here, you can look at uh, this chart here of Tropical Tidbits. If I can get to the right chart. No, in fact, I've actually got it on weathercharts.com. And you can see here, this is the current setup. So we've got quite a lot of uh, positive height anomalies across the far north. But if you notice here, as I quickly play through the loop, what happens is we start to see more negative developing over the Arctic region. This is something I touched on in Friday's video about the eastward progression of the Manjulian Oscillation. It goes, st starts to go into that kind of inactive phase, but the downstream effects of that, that shift in the uh, pulses of upward motion versus sinking starts to lower the heights across the uh, across the North Atlantic and Greenland. That is changing the upper pattern. Instead of having blocking to the north, we're starting to see the, the strong positive is now starting to shift back towards the more traditional subtropical belt. And what that does is we're going to start to see a negative developing over the North Atlantic in Iceland. We've seen record breaking warmth in, in recent days here. But you notice here, as we progress towards the end of June, we have instead of a positive across the, the North Atlantic and to the west of the UK, we're now starting to see that negative. So we've shifted the upper air pattern quite dramatically here. And while we may see some surges of major heat, from Spain and Portugal and France up into the UK, there is model output that suggests well into the 30s towards the very end of June. And certainly this would support uh, some significant heat surge coming up from the south with, when you've got that kind of more strong, positive North Atlantic oscillation. So you can see the ideas that I'm talking about, how, how the pattern is evolving. We're seeing that shift in the MJO through the tropics that is then shifting the pattern in the Northern Hemisphere, positive NAO, a positive Arctic Oscillation. We've got more lower heights across the top. And then, of course, stronger uh, Azores, high pressure. We have the, the potential for surges of heat coming up. But also, we are also seeing the possibility of areas of low pressure skirting the northwest of the British Isles here. So we start to see a, a shift, focus of warmest, driest conditions further south and east. Uh, possibly more unsettled, fresher conditions, more Atlantic-driven weather towards the, the you know Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Scotland here. So we'll watch this space and see what happens. But you can see here as I play through this loop, look at how the trough now starts to focus between Scotland and Iceland here, keeping things a lot more unsettled. And we may start to see as we step into the month of July a more Atlantic-driven pattern and a very different type of pattern than what we've seen so far. Ocean temperatures are incredibly warm. There's no getting away from that. Sea of Japan, we've also got, uh, of course, the strong warming over the eastern portion of the Pacific. Now, the Manjulian Oscillation actually is doing an interesting thing. Strong pulse over the Indian, uh, Indonesian uh, you know, maritime continent region. What we are seeing is that we are seeing um, an increase because of that pulse being over the far western Pacific, over Indonesia, we're increasing the strength of the easterly trade winds. And what that's doing is it's actually kind of slowing down the progress of the El Nino, actually. So that's quite interesting. But I think as this pulse progresses eastwards over the Pacific, we will start to see uh, a bit of a decrease in the uh, easterly trade winds. And therefore, we should start to see a stronger warming developing here. But of course, the El Nino has been declared by the Americans, not so by the Australians. And it'll be interesting to see how quickly we can start to warm the eastern Pacific up. Very warm North Pacific, very, very warm Atlantic Ocean at the moment here. Uh, uh, this is an interesting tweet by Colin McCarthy here. And of course, this will go along with the global warming folk, but certainly uh, against um, you know, the anti-warming people as well. I, as you know, I kind of sit in the fence, but there's no getting away from this here, folks. One of the warm, most severe marine heat waves, which I, I'm not a big fan of that term, 
Uh, marine heat waves on Earth has developed off the coast of Ireland and the UK with water temperatures as high as four to five Celsius above normal. And what will be interesting is um, the influence this has. Now, this is something I've been harping on about for quite some time that uh, we could see some very interesting things later down the road. I think as the pressure starts to decrease, we've seen that on the GFS, this could enhance rainfall over the UK as we progress through the middle and second half of this upcoming summer season. We shall certainly wait and see what takes place. Now, the Indian Ocean um, you know, is, of course, cooking at the moment. Its current sea surface temperatures, uh, uh, you know, it's warm throughout the Indian Ocean. Now, what you have for a positive IOD is actually uh, warm to the west, cool to the east. Now, what is th thwarting the overall setup as well is you've not got as much cool around Indonesia versus the warm over the eastern portion of the Pacific. What happens is when enhanced rainfall over South America, we decrease rainfall over Australia. Indonesia, there is concerns of drought here. And you, you typically find cooler waters over the Indian Ocean east versus warmer west. Increased rainfall and, and, uh, and flash floods in parts of Ethiopia Sudan and the uh, uh, Congo and um, and whatnot. I don't know what Congo is. Uh, uh, Congo, sorry. Uh, you start to increase the rainfall over eastern portions of Africa versus drought in the you know Australia and Indonesia, even Southeast Asia. But these warm waters are enhancing rainfall, and what we are likely to see is an increase in rainfall uh, over India as we progress through the upcoming week. So there is bipper joy there. As you can see here, spreading its rain across the northwest of India, keeping things cool. Further south and east, the temperatures are exceptionally hot. And as we progress through the period here, folks, you can start to see the greens representing lower heights and indeed rainfall across a large swathe of India through the upcoming week. So we are going to increase the monsoon uh, and advance it north. So certainly this will be positive news for of course, the fifth largest uh, economy in the, on the world uh, stage, of course. We've also got the largest population, I believe, on the planet now in India. It's taken over China, of course. And, uh, of course, this is an essential uh, weather system that uh, billions of people depend on, of course. And it looks as if we are going to see an increase in rainfall in this part of the world. Now, looking at the uh, sea surface temperature projections of the CFS V2, you can see here that the El Nino it does increase in strength. We still have warm waters in this region of the world here, which may um uh, can slightly temper drought influence. But of course, it will come as time progresses over this region of the world. We'll have to watch this space as we go forward. And believe it or not, I'm actually running out of time as per usual. Looking at the global sea uh, temperature anomalies here for the month to date, of course, there's no getting away from the very warm air released by that unusually warm water uh, anywhere from Cape Verde all the way up to the UK and Ireland, of course. Uh, cool across the western and, and northern portions of Greenland, very warm Canada, relatively cool across the lower 48. Alaska cool on average. We've got a northwest India that's below average because of the rainfall recently. Pakistan as well, warmer Middle East. We've yet to see, 40, uh, we've yet to see 50 degrees Celsius anywhere uh, in the northern hemisphere this year so far and i think actually on the on the world stage actually we've yet to see 50 that will likely change in the coming days as 50 to 52 celsius is expected uh over um over iran i think in the coming days so yeah very interesting stuff of course keep it right here on my youtube channel i will uh, talk more about the global extremes and what's been happening around the planet in next week's video. I just wanted to look a little bit more at the driving uh, force behind uh, the, the weather situation at the moment globally and give you a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. Certainly the positive Indian Ocean dipole looks likely as we progress towards autumn, which typically that's when it peaks. Of course, the El Nino is developing. We've got the very warm North Atlantic It'll be interesting to see how things progress. Australia looks as if it's warmer than average. The equatorial por portion of Africa is actually below average, as you can see here. Warmer than average across the north, warmer than average across the south. So yeah, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you again 
next Sunday with another Global Weather and Climate Report. Bye for now.